Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna vote to see the um, we are talking about um, the Constitution in general. Uh, when we left, we were talking about Article 2 in particular. What does Article 2 discuss? What what branch of government? The executive. Everything that has to do with the president and vice president. And we had just finished up with the oath. The oath of office for a president is actually listed in the Constitution. All right. Now, uh, the president can be impeached for treason, bribery, high crimes, and other misdemeanors. All right. Now, one of the things that the presidents throughout history have been doing is they have been writing executive orders. Now, the first president to ever write an executive order was George Washington. Now, an executive order is for the people who work for him at the White House. You know, it's like, order more paper clips. No starch. That's an executive order. <laughs> right? Since then, presidents have been using executive orders for a whole lot more than that. Now, let's just pick on Bill Clinton, because he's an easy target. Uh, Bill Clinton signed a total of 357 executive orders while he was president. Now these executive orders basically give some form of absolute authority to one of the federal agencies in time of national emergency. So if there is a national emergency, FEMA is going to go in and take care of all the hospitals and stuff. In a national time of national emergency, your uh, energy commission is going to go in, and they are going to take complete and total control over power generation. And other agencies are going to go in and take over complete control of uh, transportation. The FCC, I mean, you guys don't do radio stations, but in every radio station, in all their radio, you know, electronic setup, they've got a chassis built into the system where the FCC can automatically, by remote control, take over the radio station. So you could be doing the, you know, the wild 50s music or whatever, and suddenly they send out a radio signal and they are broadcasting and you're not. Isn't that great that the federal government can take over what goes out over the airwaves? Now, um, I've got on page 15 of your handout, I have a list of which executive orders uh, Bill Clinton signed in which year. Notice that in 2001, and he left office January 21st, in t three weeks before he left, he still signed three executive orders. Now, Paul Begala, his uh, ad top advisor, has, has been quoted, he's been on TV saying, stroke of the pen, Law of the land. Kind of cool, huh? Well, yeah, I suppose, if you're the king. It was a monarchy when the king would sign a proclamation and make it law. If Bill Clinton does that, doesn't Bill Clinton bypass Congress? What happens to our series of checks and balances? You're just thumbing their nose at it. So, I don't care who Bill Clinton was sleeping with. If Hillary doesn't care, why should I care? You know, it's not hurting my feelings. But I'm a little bit irritated with the 357 executive orders that he signed. Each one of those, as far as I'm concerned, he should be locked up for treason. Now, back on page 49, I believe, of your uh, handout, is a list of web pages and these are uh, web links that you can go to to study a lot of these particular executive orders. Don't take my word for any of this stuff. Go out and do your own research. Read the executive order for yourself. And I've got summaries down there. Uh, 
11490 assigns emergency preparedness functions to federal departments and agencies. Uh, 10997 emergency preparedness functions to the Secretary of Interior. Emergency preparedness functions to the Secretary of Agriculture. But what, what type of emergency can you have in agriculture? You know? Um, and down uh, at 11. Uh, 11,002 emergency preparedness functions to the postmaster general. What's he going to do? Lick stamps for you? <laughs> Why do all these things have emergency preparedness in common? They all deal with some national emergency. Guess who gets to decide whether or not there's a national emergency? President. The president. So with the stroke of a pen, suddenly you can have martial law overnight. No, no, no. This is the United States. That only happens in, you know, Angola and Russia and all those other places. Yeah? And when the army tanks come rolling down your street, you're going to be going, oh, gosh, I didn't think it could happen here. A national emergency is not defined either. National emergency is not defined anywhere. It's basically up to the discretion of the president. Oh, well, I feel a whole lot better. I trust the president. <laughs> They were talking about Executive Order 12919, which was signed June 3rd of 1994. That's not too long ago. And this executive order was written by Bill Clinton, released to the public, and just recently became law in 1998. It is an order that consolidates many previous executive orders into one sweeping executive order. Why have all these little tiny ones? We'll just bundle them all up into one sweeping order. And it says, quote, uh, and in view of the existing national emergency declared by Proclamation 2914 of December 16, 1950. Yeah, what was that national emergency? What page do you want? This is page 15. We're on page 15 of the handout. So... In 1950, we had some sort of a national emergency, and Bill Clinton is writing this order because of the existing national emergency. Did you feel like you were in some sort of national emergency in 1994? Yeah, they elected. They don't. They just have to. The point is, they just have to declare the national emergency. They don't have to tell anybody about it. So, we're finished with Article 2. Let's go to Article 3 of the Constitution. Now, let me show you the Constitution. How many, how many articles does the Constitution have? Seven. Seven articles. The first three, legislative, executive, and judicial. So let's look at Article 1. It fills up all of the first page and almost all of the second page. I mean, and these are large pages. There's a lot of stuff in Article 1 for Congress. Then we start Article 2 down in the bottom and finish up Article 2 on this next page. So it's not quite a full page for Article 2 for the President. Article 3, I mean, it's like less than a third of a page. There's not a whole lot there. Well, what is the Constitution? The Constitution is supposed to be the chains of the Constitution. It's supposed to put limitations on government. Which branch of government has the fewest chains? The judicial. Which one do you think is most hazardous to your liberty? judicial. Now, open up your book on the Constitution to page 31. You'll see the beginning of Article 3. It says, The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court. All right, that's good. The, uh, now, down to the fourth and fifth line. The judges of both the Supreme and Inferior Courts shall hold their offices during good behavior. What does that mean? 